Please set it out to just praise God and worship God. Amen. Prayer is good. The word is good. But there is a place for praise and worship when it comes to spiritual things. And as a church, the Lord spoke to me, say, balance it out. Amen? Amen. You teach a lot. It's also a time for people to get to do what? Praise me. Hallelujah. So don't be surprised if I take a little step back in teaching and also give room and time for us to just experience God in worship and praise. Hallelujah. First Sunday, we'll have a celebration Sunday. Last Sunday, we'll have the Holy Ghost, you know, time. Amen? Amen. That's uh, when we break bread. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Part of my message has already gone forth, talking about times of opportunity. Amen? Amen. You know, what the world call times of difficulty or the time of storm is what God calls time of opportunity, amen, or times of opportunity. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you might take a look at um, your life and what is going on and consider it to be a period of storm or you may look at what is going on around you, whether it's your job, your nation, your career, wherever you find yourself, country or place you're from and all that, and you can consider it to be a time of storm, Amen. But the, the, for God, is a time of opportunity. Amen? Tell is a time of opportunity. Time of scarcity is always a time of opportunity. It's always a time of opportunity. While others are looking at the scarcity, somebody else is seeing opportunity. Just to go ahead of my message, you know, if there's scarcity of water somewhere, glory be to God. You know, it's an opportunity for somebody who knows how to get water to make money. You know that, right? Amen. The scarcity of water down this way. And you know how to get water or where to get water and get it over there. It's an opportunity for you to make money. That's just life. Amen. Amen. And so while you could have everybody here complaining of the scarcity of water, no water, people are dying of thirst and people are not drinking water and all that and all that, somebody else is, t- is saying, oh, this is my opportunity in life to make money. Where do we have water around? Let me find a way to get water to that place. It will sell. Hallelujah. People have become quick millionaires because they have short scarcity or short problem. And they knew where to get the supply. Get it over to it and guess what happens? They were supplied. They became, they became very rich. Hallelujah. Sometimes you don't even need to know where to or how to get the water to the place. Some of the um, some of the wealth transfer that is happening in this day and age is not just about those who are manufacturing things or who are producing things. People who are like middlemen, they are making a lot of money. What does eBay produce? If I may ask, do they produce anything in eBay? Do they produce anything? Is that man a billionaire? Yeah. What, what's his job? You have what to sell. This person wants to buy. I stand as a middleman. What do you have to sell? What do you want to buy? Yeah. I get my share. So sometimes you might not be the one that has the water, but you know somebody that has the water. Play the middleman. Hallelujah. Play the middleman. It's a time of opportunity. Glory be to God. Amen. You know what the Bible tells us? See, if you don't know this, um, chances are you'll be among those who are who are seeing themselves as a victim of the situation. Hallelujah. Seeing themselves as, as victims of the storm that is rising, the, blowing across the nation. Hallelujah. But that's something that we must understand that God has planned for his children. Hallelujah. God has planned for his children. One of the things that God did for the church was to give them pastors. Hallelujah. 
says, and God gave them some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, and all that. See, for the edifying of the, uh, for, 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 talk about the edifying of the church, for the perfecting of the state, for the edifying shop, and for the, for the edifying of the, of the church, and for the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. Now, in Jeremiah that we read, hallelujah. Jeremiah 3, 2015, I think so. He says, God will give you a pastor after my own, his own heart. Amen that will um, teach you or gives you knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. The greatest gift you can receive in the time of storm and difficulty is not money. It is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. How to navigate your child, you know, the times of your challenges or the times of trouble. Like I always say, problem is not a problem if you have an answer to it. Amen. And the time you spend figuring out the answer is always much more than the time you spend actually giving the answers. It's always more. Let you know what to do. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, I think in Isaiah, yeah, 60, it says, Say darkness shall cover the earth. Say arise and shine for that light is come. Say darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people. Hallelujah. But not so for you. It says you arise and shine. Amen. Amen. It says the king shall come to the brightness of your own light. Guess what happens when there's darkness? Opportunity for your light to what? Shine. To shine. If there's no darkness, your light has no value. Wow. Wow. There's no darkness, your light has no value. Light a candle where we are right now and see how valuable it is. Check out how valuable it is. But where there is darkness, your light has value. You make a difference. That's the only way you can make a difference in life. Because there is darkness over there. And you have light. Hallelujah. And we're the light of this world. Glory be to God. Having an understanding of how to deal with issues. God, see, God, God gives us pastors. God gives us um, prophets. Gives us, you know, men and, men and women. Let me put it like that. You know, a servant of his. Hallelujah. To direct, especially to direct the people in the time of difficulty. Time of difficulty. You see, I believe strongly there are so many people that are going to receive a breakthrough from just this morning praise and worship. There are so many people that are going to see changes or things happen in their lives from just spending time in the presence of God differently and praising Him. Hallelujah. One of those kind of ways God works by instructing the pastor and letting the people know at such and such a time like this, why don't you separate yourself and praise God? Hallelujah. And that makes a difference in your life. Sometimes it could be by speaking into their life. Amen? It could just be by just speaking or releasing words. Somebody says, how does that really tie? Glory be to God. You must understand that the words of the servant of God are not mere words. The Bible says God watches to perform the words of his servant and the counsel of his messenger. In other words, he watches to see what he said. And see how he will ensure that it comes to pass in your life. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. And sometimes his word does not necessarily be the smartest or the wisest. It just has to be that there's a word that God has given to him for you, for your own life. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. And if you value and treasure it for yourself, God says he watches to perform it. In Ezra chapter 6, let me look for that scripture. It was a time of um, the Israelites that had fallen. Things were happening around them. Glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> I wanted to tell Brad Christian before I forget that thing we had on, you were right. <laughs> you were right with the scripture we discussed. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, extra in chapter 6, put extra chapter 6, 14 and 15 on the board for me. Says, and the elders of the Jew build it and they prosper through the prophesying of Hagar, the prophet, and Zechariah, the sons of Ado, it, it, um, Ido. And they build it and finish it according 
to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Atazas, the kings of Persia. So this is when Israel had fallen, they had fallen, you know, they were in exile and um, Nehemiah had returned to build, you know, um, to rebuild Jerusalem. Glory be to God. So, and um, Atazas and the other kings have given a commandment to go ahead and rebuild and all that. And the Bible says that they were able to rebuild. Say they prospered by what? Say through the prophesying of Hagar, the prophet, and Zechariah, the sons, the son of Edo. These were the two prophets they had at that point in time. Glory be to God. See, the people of God prospers by the prophesy or by the words that are spoken over their lives because God ordained it for your good. Hallelujah. That in times of difficulty, you will not just struggle through your life. You will not work hard to make ends meet. You will not increase, you know, by taking another job or increasing your working hour or just, you know, slaving it. No. Glory be to God. God has ordained by you know, by through prophesying of his words into your life, doors will be open for you. If, look, if I have to slave it like the people of the world slave it in order to make ends meet, then what use is it me being a believer? If I have to work as hard as they work to get what they get, then what's the difference? What's the difference? If, my story, if the story of my life have to follow the same pattern like theirs, then of what use is being a believer? Glory be to God. But you see, sometimes we can allow the story of our lives to follow, to follow the pattern of that of an unbeliever if we fail to do what? To heed the counsel of God or the word of God for us. Hallelujah. There's wisdom in God. There is power in God. Amen? All we need to do is learn how to appropriate it into our own lives. Amen? We need to learn it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So he says he gives you pastors and all that after your own, his own heart. Like I always say, God will give you a pastor after his own heart, not after your own heart. So if what he says does not agree with your heart, don't blame him. Because he's giving you pastor after his own heart, not after your own heart. Amen? Um, amen? amen? Are you still with me? Amen. Glory be to God. And he says, he will feed you or give you knowledge and understanding. See, in difficult times, one of the things that you need to know, and one of the understanding that you need to have is about who you are. Your makeup as a believer. Glory be to God. If you don't know who you are, you will run like every other person is running. Amen? Amen? You will scream like every other person is screaming. You will respond like every other person is responding. Glory be to God. But if you know differently, and this has always been my passion for the body of Christ. My passion is always to make people know who they are in Christ. So that no human being can take them for granted or make merchandise of them. Or sell them fake things or make them feel differently apart from who they are. Glory be to God. My passion is always to make somebody know who he is in Christ and be able to take a stand based on who, what he knows. Glory be to God. When you know for yourself who you are, death will stare at you on your face and you will not be scared. Glory be to God. See, the knowledge of who you are in Christ. You know, I said this on Thursday, quite many of us don't come. But your, the knowledge of who you are in Christ is what will determine the victory that you win in life. It's not the battle that determines the victory. It's not strong battle, difficult battle, great battle. No. The battles are the same. If God is going to heal a headache, he's going to use the same power he used to cure a cancer to heal a headache, not a different one. It's the same blood. The same blood of Jesus that paid for it. No difference. Hallelujah. Amen. It's our understanding that matters. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you see yourself as an overcomer in this life? Do you know that you are an overcomer in this life? 
Not that you will overcome, but that you have overcome. Hallelujah. First John chapter 4, verse 4 tells us. It says we are overcomers. Can you put that on the board? You're not going to overcome. You are an overcomer by DNA, by your personality, by who you are. So you have God, little children, and you have overcome them. You are not going to overcome. You have already overcome them, overcame them. Glory be to God. In other words, if you're seeing yourself like somebody who is going to overcome, there's a problem. If you're looking at yourself, I'm hoping that someday you will overcome, there's a problem. Chances are you do things that you believe will help you to become to overcome. But if you know that you have already overcome, <laughs> hallelujah, rather than trying to do things that will help you to overcome, guess what happens? You will maintain your stand like one that has already overcome. You are not going to try to do things that will help you to overcome. You see, then that, I don't know if you understand this. That they, look, they sound the same. They look this kind of the same, but they are not the same. One is trying to do A, B, C so that he will get there. Amen. The other person too is not there, but he knows that he doesn't need to do anything to get there. So he waits for his time. He says, I am getting there. The other person is very active, working to get there. This one is at rest in what he knows. I am getting there. I am not troubled by what I see today. I will get there. I'm not looking everywhere, doing everything, going any, about trying to, to get there. No. I'm getting there. Amen. God is taking me there. I know that for a fact. Wow. Glory be to God. Amen. So are two difference. In, first, in Colossians in chapter 1, I always like to read this for us. You know, to kind of examine again in our mind. Like to read it to us again. Colossians 1 and... Um, I think whether it's 13, 12, 13 or so. Paul was writing to the church in Colossae and he said, giving thanks unto the Father which had made us me to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light who had delivered us. Can you see the word there? Delivered, past tense. Delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You have been delivered from everything that can be associated with Satan or darkness. You are not going to be delivered. Stop running about and looking for deliverance in your life. You have to be, wake up to the fact that God has delivered you. Awaken to the fact that you are delivered of the Lord. Glory be to God. So what is the difference? The difference is one that knows, stays, and cha- faces the challenges and rebuke it. The other person runs about looking for deliverance. Says, I'm a child of God. I have to be delivered. So I go about looking around for deliverance. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. But that won't be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. That won't be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Pressures and um, storm that, you know, that times of opportunity. Why? The Bible says God have his way. <laughs> in the midst of the storm. God always have his way in the midst of the storm. Now, chapter 1 and verse 3, if you put that on the board, God will always have his way. Amen? Now? Nahu. I'm going to pronounce it like my tongue. Nahu. Which, how do you pronounce it? No, no, no. Ria, how do you pronounce that, that book? Is it Nahu or Nahu? Nahu? Nahu. Nahum, okay. If you're like me, I'm sure your children have been correcting your accent for some time and telling you the difference of which one and all that. Glory be to God. Uh, hallelujah. Ozzy, do you even know what I'm talking about? Please, if you know what the book of Nahum is, go to it. Now, now he hears me. Was I speaking... Uh, robot language before that you don't understand. What, what do you think I was speaking before? Glory be to God. Now, one and three. 
I have to pronounce it three different ways. I say now, now, who, now, now. Everyone, everybody's looking. How do you pronounce it? Now. Oh my God. Now, finish. Okay. <laughs> he said, the Lord is slow to hunger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord had his way in the wild wind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. God has his way in the wind. In other words, it doesn't matter the storms that you're going through. It doesn't matter the challenges. See, God will always have his way. Amen. Even in the midst of the storm, Amen. he has his way. In other words, the storm cannot resist him. He cannot resist what he wants to do in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the way we relate, you know, with storms in our life should be from the perspective of who God is. That even in this mess, God will still have his way. Amen. I promise you, you hold on to him, you put your confidence and trust in him. Even in the mess, God will have his way in your life. When the enemy thinks it's over, they will see that your life has just begun. Amen. Hallelujah. God will always have his way. The scripture we read in um, 2 Corinthians 4, from 16 to 18, we put that on the board. While the outward man perishes, they say the inward man is renewed. In other words, challenges always make the outer man to look as if he's haggard. You know, beaten down. But the Bible says, don't pay attention to this outer man. Because why this outer man looks faint and all that, say, know that the inward man is being renewed. Say, so for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perished, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. A glory is being revealed in your life. The storm is there to cause the inner beauty to show up. And it will show up. Hallelujah. If you faint not, guess what happens? The inner beauty will show up. Hallelujah. So why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. Change the way you see storms and difficulty. Change it. Amen? Change your perspective. Like Sister Linda said in her testimony, it's a season. You will, go, you will soon come out of it. Amen? It's a season. It's a season. You will pull out of it. You will come out strong. What is that challenge? You will pull up. Amen? Strong. Don't always look at your experience. You know, sometimes we are too focused on looking at what we are going through. That we fail to see where God is taking us. We are too focused on the problem. We look intently at what we are going through, our experience. That we fail to see what God says about such experience that we are, that we are having. Don't look at it like that. You're going through a storm. That time of your life, guess what you should make sure you're doing? Stay alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, there are periods where you just need to learn how to stay alive. Amen? Amen? There are times in your life you need to learn how to stay alive. Amen. According to the Bible, the way you learn or you can stay alive is to be joined to the living. Hallelujah. Say, get yourself joined to the living. Ecclesiastes 9 and 4. If you put that on the board, please. Stay joined to the living. Hook up to the living. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He said, for him that is joined to, the, to all the living, there is what? It's a terrible storm in your life. The way to stay afloat or to stay alive is to be joined to the living. If you're joined to the living, it says what? There is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. In other words, stay alive. 
No matter how lowly you think you have descended or you are going through. Hallelujah. It says, stay alive. For a dead lion, a dead one that is great but dead has no value. But one who has learned a survivor or tactic staying alive might not have everything, live exactly and do like he would. But it says he's joined to the living. Amen. He will stay alive. Amen. Glory be to God. In the times of storm, learn to stay alive. That is not the time you want to take on great things. Hallelujah. There's something computer calls it safe mode. Amen. You know, just login. Do you remember safe mode? Lab, right? You know what it is? Everything is not going on well, just, but just stay in a safe mode. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you learn to stay in a safe mode as a Christian? As a believer? Do you learn to stay in a safe mode? So that you don't kill yourself before miracle shows up. So that you don't, you don't get destroyed before, you know, um, God shows up in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So for he that is joined to the living, guess what? There is hope. There is hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Get joined to the living. Hallelujah. Now, the, let's just look at some of the characteristics of the living. Amen. So if you say you are joined to the living, there are certain things that must go on in your life. Amen? One of the characteristics of a living thing is that they move. Is that not true? So don't allow your problem to paralyze you. Don't allow pressure or hardship to paralyze your life. Hallelujah. Because it's possible. You can get... See, you can be overwhelmed with a problem and you just decide not to do anything about it. Or you, de you decide not to move on in life. You decide not to move. Then you have allowed the problem to do what? To paralyze you. You might not see the answer. You might not have the solution. Everything might not be okay right now. But learn to do what? Stay alive. Learn to stay alive. Make sure that you're taking baby steps. The little, little things you know to do. Do it. The small little things you can do to help yourself, do it. Why? Because there's hope for the living. There's hope. Glory be to God. Amen. Don't have the mindset of what am I living for now? If this is gone, then I'm dead. There is nothing that is worth dying for. Read my lips clearly. No one, nothing is worth dying for. The only thing that is worth dying for is the gospel. No one. No one. Hallelujah. Nothing. No material thing. I lost all my property. They are properties. They were here before you were born. They were here before you came into this world. And after you leave the world, guess what? Thank you. They are right here. They are properties. Oh my God. My business crashed. It's business. Let it crash. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't care what is crashing. I don't care what it is. No, I don't care like I'm not, I'm insensitive to it. No, but I'm saying no matter what that thing is, it's not strong enough. Don't give it the consideration and say, oh, I have come to the end of the road. Because you haven't. Stay afloat. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Secondly, make sure that you are growing because a living thing grows. Hallelujah. Amen. The right area to grow is in the scripture, is in the word of God. Immerse yourself inside the word of God. Know what the Bible says about your experience. Take it in. Keep taking it in. Amen. And make sure that you're growing because growth will give to you your inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Growth will give to you your inheritance in life. The Bible says, you know, the hair, if it be a child, say, differ not from what? 
a servant. He said, though he be Lord of all, but he's like, say what? A servant. Servant has no inheritance. Glory be to God. Servant has no inheritance. But that child needs to grow. That child needs to grow. Glory be to God. Now, the third and the very important one I'll talk about is if you are living, then you must constantly respond to stimuli. Amen? Amen. One of the ways they know that a cell is dead is, you know, if they poke it and, you know, there's no response, you don't move, you don't feel it, then you see that cell is dead. Is that not true? Medical people. Hallelujah. In other words, if it's living, there must be a response. Hallelujah. If you are living, you must learn to do what? Respond to stimuli. You must know how to respond in life. Right response in life, right attitude, will put you in the right place. Amen. Glory be to God. Respond with life. Hallelujah. Amen. When I say respond with life, I mean respond positively. Do not see death. Don't respond in death, but respond with life. Respond with life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. One of the things that will happen to you when you respond with life is that you will change your perspective about, you know, how you see things. So yes, this has been a problem in your life. But guess what? You can change the things you see as a problem or the people like you see as a problem into an asset in your life. Hallelujah. See, in life, for example, it's very easy for one to think people who criticize you don't like you. You know that? It's very easy. And so, you can see criticism as, um, um, as you know, uh, negatively. Amen? You can see those who criticize you as enemies and all that. But you know that you can also use turn around and use the people who criticize you as an asset. Every time you are done with something in your mind, you go and run it through them. Because you know they will criticize you. Let them critique it. Guess what you've done? You are using them as an asset in life. It just become an asset for you. But one who is not wise runs from those who criticize him. Runs from criticism. Doesn't want to hear it. But the same people who criticize, what you can call negative in your life, you can turn it around. That's how you respond with life to negative things. You can learn to use what is considered an enemy negative, can change it to an asset or something that is very dear to you. If you have only the people who tell you how good you are in life and how well you are doing, you are in for a long surprise in life. I'm telling you. So many surprises await you. People that only tell you how well you are doing, how good you are doing. Hallelujah. I'm not very good at, you know, I say this, um, my son is here, you know. If he does anything good, the way he knows that what he has done is good is that I don't say anything. My, my wife said it's, that's bad. <laughs> I'm trying to work on it. I can't just. I said, you know, I'm a man. He's a guy. We don't give praises anyhow to guys. I don't know where I got that one from, Shao. Let me be honest. I do not know where I got that from. So I'm not saying the Bible say, right? Yeah. Are you clear with me? Yeah. I don't know where I got it from, but I just like... No, he's a guy. You, know, you don't just keep giving a guy praises. But let him do one thing wrong. You, he, he knows. And like I tell him, I'm watching you every time. And he knows. Does anything wrong? That is watching. Hallelujah. And probably because I'm not just the type that love people just trying to tell me how well I'm doing. Honestly. I was just like, oh, you know, it's okay. Just keep it a little bit mild. Amen. I appreciate when you tell me what we need to do next. Amen? 
No, where are we going now? And there are some people I appreciate in this church a lot. I'm telling you, I, I really love them. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. I've always said that God brought them my way. Amen. Because they will tell me the way it is, and I appreciate it. See, I just want to know where next we should go. I'm telling you, I, I really want to know what next, which next direction. We are doing great. We, we are doing great. We know. Amen. But can we do better? Can we do better? Exactly. So let's celebrate what they have celebrated yesterday. To, to today and tomorrow, let's look forward to something else. Amen? Amen? Why? Use all the resources around you. Now, why you also need people who should always once in a while tell you, oh, this is good. Because everyone needs encouragement once in a while. Is that not true? You need encouragement here and there. But don't look for that. Don't stay with that. Amen? You prefer the other one. Prefer. You know what the Bible talks about when a child is born and somebody dies? Look at what it says. It says it's better to go to a place where they are mourning than where a child is being born. Is that not true? You've not already seen it before in the Bible? Thank you. And it tells us why. It says one makes you to rejoice and just be happy. Another one tells you the reality of life. Kai, I will go this way. What am I doing with my time right now? Am I wasting my time? Am I doing something valuable? One reminds us of that. And David said, he said it's better to be where? Where you are burying somebody than where a child is being born. Just wanted to know not that encouragement is bad, but you should really look forward to people who point out things that are not going on well in your life and love them and appreciate them. It's not everybody that can do it. Telling the truth, it's not everybody that can do it. Love them and appreciate them. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Stay joined to the living. Have a right perspective to life. <laughs> Don't see dead, but see what God is doing. Amen? Amen. See what God is doing. So with, the, with life, you get to develop the spirit or the mindset of enterprise, like I said. Rather than seeing problem, guess what you're seeing? Solution. Hallelujah. Look for ways to be a blessing in somebody's life. See, there are many inventions that has been that has come up because somebody saw a challenge in, with another person or whether in his own life and figured out a way to solve that. And solving it for this person, he also realized he's not the only one with that problem. There are many others. So he produced more, right? And before you know what is happening, many are in the market. Um, there's this Woman, my wife buys this natural hair, this thing from. I think she said she was doing it for her daughter. It started by mixing things for her daughter. You know, and she sells them online. Interestingly, she has so much market that you know, she says you now have to order only on Friday. <laughs> I'm telling you. I said, no. I said, order on Thursday. We're talking. She said, why don't you order? I said, no. She has said orders only on Fridays. But this started because she tried to do something for her children. And seeing how that thing worked with her children, guess what happened? She put it online. Initially, it was just teaching people how to do it. Then I guess people started asking her, look, we don't have time to do it. Why don't you do it for us? We'll pay you. It's okay, I'll do it for you, but you have to place order. Then she'll do a few for people. And before you know what is happening, the market has grown. Now, she takes orders only on Friday. <laughs> Which businessman in this world takes orders only on Fridays? You must really be making money. Yeah. Don't start by trying to make money. Have the mindset of wanting to help people. Have the mindset of wanting to be a solution in people's life. And there is no way being a solution in people's life, helping people will not translate 
to your well-being in life. To translate. But don't begin by saying, oh, how much money is there? Because they're always looking at money. Chances are the love for humanity won't be there. The love for humanity won't be there. You will not know what it is to help people in life. You will not know what it is to do things for people. It will be all about dollar and cents. Hallelujah. Let it be about trying to help people. Respond with life. See how what God is doing. Yes, things don't look so good, so great right now. But don't, don't think that will be the entire story of your life. Hallelujah. That, that's not the entire story. That's just a chapter in the book that God has written concerning you. And guess what happens after chapter 1 and chapter 2 is passed? You have to flip to chapter 3. You know, sometimes you read the introduction of the book, like when we're writing, then you see the middle. Then if you're like me, you jump to summary or to conclusion every time. Then we don't have the patience to read through everything. So we glance through the introduction, we pick a little in the middle and read the, um, my wife is shaking. You know, read the, I always like to read the conclusion, or the, you know, the end of it. Get the story. Many people are not patient enough to flip the book to get to the end cover. Don't be that type. Let your life gradually unfold. Know that there are better stories written ahead of you. Amen. It doesn't matter the picture that Satan is painting today. Right now, what is before you, that's not the end story. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible tells us joy cometh in the morning. It might look dark right now. It might look something that can, you, you, don't, you, you can't imagine. You can't even see where light will shine from. But I promise you, the Bible says, do not be weary in well-doing. In due season, you will reap if you faint not. And I pray that will be your portion. Amen. Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author. I love the fact that it's just no author and finisher. See, you know why the Bible talk about the author and the finisher? It's because the in-between is about us to work out. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What are you working out? What are you doing with your life? What's going on? It says a mess. It's okay. Hallelujah. God is not intimidated by any mess. He said it's dirty. The word is good enough to wash it. Hallelujah. He said it's soil. He washed it. He says though your sin be as red as what? Put that scripture. He said but he makes it as what? As white as snow. He said it's been stained. It cannot, the stain cannot come out. Not with God. The stain lives like this. Say, my life has been dented. My life has been messed up. This has happened. That has happened. Not where God is. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He cleanses. Washes us as white as snow. Have confidence in that. Don't go down with the storm. You are not designed to go down with the storm. You were not made to be defeated. Amen. You were not created to be overcome. No. You are created in the image, in the likeness of God. We are victorious in this life. We are overcomers in this life. The power of Satan is broken where you are. Amen. Pay no attention to what Satan is doing. Fix your attention on what God is doing. The Bible says that, but for our light affliction, say our light affliction is but for a what? It's but for a moment. And it's working for us a far more exceeding weight of glory. That's what is working out in your life. The glory is about to reveal. Let the affliction pass. Let the storm pass so that the glory can be revealed. And I pray for everyone in the house today. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Your house will not go down with the storm. Amen. You are not built on a sinking sand. Amen. You're built on a solid foundation. Amen. Though the wind will beat against the house and the storm blows over it, when it's done, you'll still be standing. Amen. And every stain that has been in the house will be washed by the storm. Amen. Will be cleansed. The building will look new. Amen. Why? 
Because the storm just washed it off. I pray for you. I pray for the glory of God to be revealed in your life. Fear will not overcome you. You will not give in to fear. In the name of Jesus. Every opinion of Satan. I block it out of your life. I block it out of your mind. Positive mindset. Godly mindset. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We worship you. In Jesus' name.